Pisces. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is your November mid-month read. Now, uh, as you guys know, or some of you may know, I am a Pisces rising. So it's always a special thing to me anytime I read to you guys because, you know, it's part of my life and I feel like the, the Pisces aspect of me is what allows me to be able to even do tarot to begin with. Um, so let's see what's going on, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. I've, I've been in my feelings lately and it's like, you know, I, I'm not telling anybody else this. I just feel like you guys are a crew that's going to understand me right now. But I was trying to do these personal readings yesterday and I just, I couldn't stop crying. And, and there's nothing really bad that's happening in my life, but maybe my energy just needed to rest. You know, I, I went to bed early and it's just like, something just felt so off. So I don't know if you guys are feeling that because with the Torian people I know, because that's my sun sign, I don't really see any struggling with them. But there's just something that's impacting me so deeply right now that I feel like maybe as a Pisces because of the way you guys deal with emotions and the way that you guys are able to see things. Maybe you guys are understanding it. Maybe you guys feel this thing too. But I mean, let's see what's going on. I want to pull the spread and I want to see uh, what this could be about. Okay, so just my little personal part on that. But... I really, really just felt like a Pisces yesterday. I'm like, why am I in my feelings? What is going on? <sighs> but it was like a release. I guess my soul just had to release something. Maybe the energies were too heavy. But let's see what's going on. What is going on with the sign of Pisces from November 15th to December 15th? What is going on with the sign of Pisces? Okay, so the energy that you guys have for this reading is the Seven of Cups. So with the Seven of Cups, there could be a situation that you're in that there's just a lot of illusions there. You're not seeing it clearly, okay? It's like you have a cloud in front of your face. Or if this is with work, there could just be a lot on your plate that you have to deal with. Um, or there could just be a lot of different options in terms of something new that you want to go into, whether it be love, whether it be a new job. But, you know, with the Seven of Cups, you have to find balance. You have to focus on what's most important and then work on the other things. But there has to be some sense of, you know, um, a structure with how you deal with things. Now, behind that, we do have the Seven of Pentacles. So there's patience when it comes to all of this chaos or all of this burden. So you guys are getting through it, I feel, you know, in a very, um, in a very graceful way. Now, the first card that you guys have for the past is the Knight of Pentacles. So with the Knight of Pentacles, there could have been an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, that was very significant for you, okay? Um, but this is going to be someone who is very, very stable, you know, very financially set, uh, someone who, you know, is a family person, someone who, you know, they're, they're going to pull up their sleeves and help you in a hard time. And with the Two of Wands... You know, you were passionate about the this path that you were taking, either towards that person or towards financial stability. And it's like you had put time and investment into it. So now you're just waiting to see what's going to come of it. Okay. And with the Hermit card, I feel like you guys just put a lot of time and like a lot of preparation into whatever this was. And it's something that you really wanted to make sure uh, was going to work the way that you wanted it to. Now, the next card we have is the Knight of Cups, so that's going to be your energy. It's going to be you guys, you know, feeling loving, feeling amorous on a path that really feels good for you. We have the Four of Pentacles in the reverse. So it's like you're moving forward, but with money, maybe money is tight and you guys are holding on to your finances a little more. Or this could be you guys, you know, taking that path, being excited, but also feeling very guarded. You know, having that, that fear of, you know, what's going to happen, Okay. And if something happens bad, how do I protect myself? You have the Queen of Wands here, so it could be a fire sign. Leo, Iris, or Sagittarius, that comes into the picture somehow. And it's like maybe you're guarding yourself towards this person, okay? Or maybe you're taking on the energy of the Queen of Wands where there's something that you're trying to bring into your life. And it's something that you're going to have a very powerful position in it. Uh, you're going to feel passionate about it. It's going to be a position where... 
you know, if, if this is with work or anything like that, you're going to invoke passion into other people. You're going to naturally become a leader in whatever it is that you're doing. The last card that we have is a page of wands in reverse. So maybe something happens where it doesn't, um, you know, transpire the way that you had wanted it to. And with the Empress card in the reverse, this could be you guys in your head. You know, like, shit, it didn't work out. Like, what do I do to, you know, get this on the right track again? Or this could be, you know, that start that you wanted just completely ending. But with the Sun card, it could have ended because of something that came to light. Something that you realized. And whatever it was that you realized may have, you know, left you emotionally unstable and feeling like this path that you took was just bad judgment altogether. And now it's putting you in a place of limbo because something that you wanted didn't come back in. In your present moment, we have the four of wands in the verse. So there's this sense of instability and transition away from what didn't work and going towards, you know, things that are going to work for you in the future. And we have the six of wands. So the fact that you're transitioning, the fact that this didn't work, the fact that this was unstable, it was actually a good thing. Um, I feel like it's something where you guys just dodged a bullet that had it transpired the way that you thought it was going to, maybe there would have been more issues with it um, than there was good. And with the five of ones in the reverse, by this thing not happening, you guys avoided a lot of conflict, okay? So I really do think it's a good thing, all right? And you lose complete faith in the situation, and I feel that this is something that you just let go, all right? We have the queen of pentacles in the reverse. So if this was um, an earth sign that you were trying to get into something with, or there was something in terms of finances that you were trying to start, you're realizing that it wasn't going to be the best option, that either they weren't going to be the best option or this wasn't going to be the best financial uh, move for you. Okay, something that would have left you feeling unstable. So you reject them or they reject you and you move forward from this. But I feel like for a lot of the Pisces here, you're going to be rejecting this person or this idea. The next card you have is the Five of Cups in the reverse. So that's why I say I feel like it's going to be you guys rejecting this because... You know, this is someone who's getting over any sense of sadness that they felt or disappointment. Three of Swords in the reverse. You're forgiving yourself for things that may not have worked out. Okay? And with the Tower card in the reverse, you're realizing that there's someone else who changed on you. Okay? Somebody else who just uh, brought a lot of drama into a situation and you had no control over it. Yes, it was something that affected you, but I feel like you guys know it really wasn't your fault. And you have to move on from this. Okay, if it was love, you let them go. Okay, and now it's like you're you may be starting over with love, but you're finding balance. You still have new ideas. You still have things that you want to move forward and do, but this thing just didn't work. Okay, again, could have been you leaving a job or leaving a person, just letting something go. Now the first card that you have for the future is the Ace of Swords in the reverse. So with the Ace of Swords in the reverse, this is conflict that you're going to be having, um, you know, with another person. Someone from your past that's coming in. You know, a situation that's still on the forefront of your mind. And with the Two of Pentacles, you're not going to be sure how you want to approach the situation or what you want to do when it comes to this person. We have the Two of Swords here too. So this could be the, do I stay, do I go? Because it's like part of you wants to run headfirst into this because you're having such a hard time moving away from it. But with the High Priestess in the reverse, that's not a good thing. There's warning signs here that you're not seeing and you're not listening to. So if whatever you dropped is coming back into your life and it's making you question if you made the right decision, I'm here to tell you, you made the right decision. Don't move back. Okay? Don't go back. And you're going to be feeling a loss because of that. So with the Ten of Pentacles in the verse, you know, maybe you invested your money into something. Maybe you invested it into a stock or something and, uh, you know, you, you lost money on that stock. Maybe you're just feeling the loss of the person that you, again, have to drop. Okay? But with the Eight of Pentacles in the reverse, you just knew it was something that you uh, weren't, that it just wasn't going to work out for you. So putting in more effort at this point, it's just going to cause more pain because you're putting, it's like you're beating a dead horse at this point. All right. World card. It's done. It's done and it's over. Now, what I really love about the world card is not only does it mean there's a situation that you're falling out of, that you're moving behind, you know, a chapter that you're closing, but it's also saying that where you are going and where you are headed, there's going to be good, beautiful, significant things that happen in your life, okay? And you have to be very, very focused. For some of you, there could be an air sign, Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini who's going to come in who's going to be significant for you. Or this is just going to be you guys focusing. Because this person, when they have a goal in mind, 
they'll cut anybody who gets in the way. They are so focused, so determined to make their goal come to pass. The last card you guys have here is the Ten of Wands. So usually this is the card that looked at, that's looked at as bad. And, you know, maybe you guys are feeling very, very burdened by, you know, things that didn't work out in your past. But I really just see this as you working hard. Yeah, you have a heavy load on your back. But because of this hard work that you're putting in and because of, you know, all the time you put into it, there's going to be a reward. And, you know, also keep in mind that 10 is the number of completion when it comes to the tarot deck. So if you feel like the world is on your shoulders, if you feel like you've been doing so much, you're going to have a breakthrough, okay? You just have to deal with the load for a little bit, but it makes you stronger. Get those gains. Knight of Pentacles, you're moving forward methodically. You're moving forward in a good way. If this has to do with finances, you're slowly building that back up by working hard. If this has to do with just peace of mind and stability, you're going towards that, okay? Or you could be burdened by this Taurus person or this uh, Virgo or Capricorn person that you may have had to let go of in the past. So it's like maybe they're trying to approach you. And with the Ace of Wands on the reverse, you're like, nope, I know how that ended and I don't want it to end that way again. So you completely just cut them off. Even though you're not over the situation, you know better and you know to cut this thing off. So that's very, very good. The last spread I did for you guys, you know, I was saying, Pisces, wake up. You guys are the most intuitive zodiac sign. Why are you allowing this to happen? You're listening to your intuition now. You're, you know, you're standing, you're um, grounded. You're not letting any toxic situation from the past come back in. Good shit, guys. All right, so I'm using the Earth Magic Oracle cards by Stephen D. Farmer. Let's see what's going on uh, in terms of advice that you guys need. What advice does Pisces need to hear from November 15th to December 15th? Show me the card of advice that Pisces needs to hear. All right. Ebb and flow. Okay. So this card is going to have a lot to do with letting things flow in our life. If there's something that leaves that it just wasn't good for you, you have to let it go gracefully. Things that come in and, you know, it's willing to feed and nourish you, allow that. Allow that to come back in. You know, don't um, don't try to force certain things in certain, uh, certain circumstances. We have to do things that are going to be good for us. Now, let me just find uh, the advice here and we'll get to that. Okay. So the advice for this card. An important aspect in the art of living is to move with the ebb and flow of your emotions, joining their fluidity but not being captured by it. It is also not necessary to become obsessed with any particular fluctuation in mood or feeling. They are simply emotions, often activated in ways that are completely beyond our understanding. When you neither, when you neither minimize nor exaggerate, the intensity and importance of your emotions, you then have a greater sense of when and how to express them. You have been fighting the ebb and flow of your own feelings, denying your hurt, anger, or sorrow by either attaching yourself to one of the other and nurturing it as if it were a nursing child, or else smoothing over your feelings with more practice responses that deny and hide what is going on beneath the surface of your expression. When you attempt to constrict yourself from experiencing your emotions, it is much like trying to stem the tides that grow even more forceful with every attempt humans make to control them. Allow yourself to swim with these variations rather than resisting them. Wow. <sighs> um, that personally gave me a lot of confirmation, you know, with what I told you guys in the beginning of this video. You know, we do things in life where it's like we try to be a certain person to other people. It's like we we try to be that place of peace. We try to be that place of serenity. Um, and it's like we try to just sometimes we're overly optimistic and we put on the smile all the time. And it's like, okay, there's no pain. Just sweep it under. Just sweep it under. 
Um, and in this case, it's like if there was any feelings that were going on, if there's any sort of hurt, anything that was just very, very internal, you have to feel the pain. You have to let it come out. Um, it, it's so funny because, you know, guys, I've been doing motivational speaking for a while, and I made this video, and, and this is something that is definitely going to relate to what you guys are going through right now, but basically, I made this video, and it was called, uh, I think it's on YouTube, you guys can look it up, but is there, um, no, it's not on YouTube, I'm sorry, is over-optimism a bad thing? Okay, and my take on this was, I'm someone who I say, you know, we attract who we are, just be happy, things come in, things come in, good things come in, just be happy, no matter what. So there was a good time in my life where, I kid you not, you know, I got out of a really bad situation, you know, it was an abusive relationship that I was in, and just a lot of other chaotic things going on in my life. And after I got out of that, I got on my workout shit, you know, I got into, I got a new body, I got a new mindset, and I was just feeling really, really good, and I told myself anything that brings me the least bit of discontent gets cut off i'm not allowing anything to make me cry i've spent years crying there was there was a good like three year span where i kid you not guys i was crying every single day so i'm like no more tears fuck it and i went about a year imagine a year of never crying the only time I, maybe I would is if, you know, I saw a cute kitten video or, or like a dog being rescued on Facebook. But that was about it. There's nothing that I was crying about. Um, the moment somebody would come into my life that I feel that they have the power to make me cry, I cut them off. It, it was ridiculous. And I know it is. So I'm sitting there just being so optimistic. But what I realized by this over optimism was that I kept sweeping shit under the rug. It's not that I didn't have problems. It's that I tried to deny that they were there. Okay, I wasn't facing things head on. I was just like, you know, if, if I ignore it and if I smile, then it's not there. But yes, it is. So there's this one day that, you know, uh, there's just someone that they really disappointed me. You know, they showed me a side of them that I never would expect. And I was bawling. I just started crying and crying and crying. And it was this, un like, I just, I could not control the crying, guys. And when I woke up the next morning, I swear to you, I was a new person. And it made me realize, holy crap, I haven't been facing things head on. You know, I know it's very important for people to be optimistic and to attract good things into our life. But you also don't want to deny the fact that there could be underlying issues that you have to face. We can't truly get good things if we're ignoring, you know, our, our inner shadows or ignoring things that are not right for us. There's times in life where you can't just walk away from something and say, okay, well, that's in the past. Let bygones be bygones. No, there's things that happen that are traumatic. There's things that you have to sit down and you have to be like, wait a minute. This was some intense shit that just happened. Like, I need a second to regroup. And I think that if we deny that and if, you know, we try to just look at things in an overly optimistic way, it's going to be way more harmful to us than just looking at the problem head on. And, you know, maybe this is a message that, you know, you guys need this month and that I myself, I really needed this message as well. Because we do so much to put ourselves out there to be, you know, a good productive member of society and to do good things for people and to make sure that everybody around us is happy. But are we happy? Are we dealing with our shit? Okay? How, how effective is a good talk with someone going to be if you're not listening to your own advice? Okay, if you're not being able to produce, you know, good feelings for yourself, if you don't have that self-love, you guys need to face shit this month. I need to face shit too, okay? And I think that's what happened with me yesterday. But don't be afraid to look at a situation head on. Don't be afraid to sit in silence for a little bit, okay? Master yourself within that silence. Become powerful within that silence. Because when we're powerful and we feel good in silence, we can never be destroyed by someone who tries to silence us or someone who becomes silenced towards us because we're okay with silence, okay? We're okay with looking on the inside. Face what you have to face. You know, sometimes the truth is hard. Sometimes it's painful. But it's necessary, okay? The truth is necessary. 
don't fight things. If you guys feel like you got to cry it out, you want to be with me and, you know, have a sob session like I did, then do what you got to do. But it's going to be something that makes you feel better. But just make sure that you build yourself back up and that you take control of your life. Okay? I don't want to see you guys down. I don't want to see you guys taking a week or two weeks off. If there's a bad situation, sure, cry it out. But then keep yourself busy. Do things that are going to be productive, that are going to help build you and, you know, build those around you. If you give off good vibes, if you give off high vibrations, it's going to come back to you. Okay? But don't be afraid to deal with the negative shit. Okay? Because this is life. And life is full of the yin and yang. That's why we appreciate good things so much. Because we know what it is to go through bad things. This is a beautiful, beautiful reading. And oh, I'm so glad that I'm ending with the Pisces reading. Because, you know, I had a bit of anxiety doing these readings, guys. And I just, I knew that I had to get it out today. And, you know, I, I meditated, you know, I, I lit some sage, and now I feel so much calmer, and that's because of this reading. So I thank you guys for allowing me to do this for you, and for you guys even taking the time to watch these things, because that's something that you don't have to do. I love you guys with a passion. For those of you that are looking for a personal reading, I do have the wait time down. It's three to five days. Okay, um, for those of you who want to instantly contact me, if you want to call or text me, I have an app called Instant Go. Um, the link is in the description. As of now, it's only for iPhone users. Okay, it's going to come out for Android within uh, the next few months or so. When it does, I'll definitely make an announcement. But if you need an emergency reading, whether it be through Instant Go or whether it be through um, an email, you know, recorded video that I send you or a phone call that you want, just let me know. Um, all my emails, all the payment institutions that I use, the financial institutions that I use, uh, anything that you guys need to know in terms of prices, it's all in the description. So read it from beginning to end. I make it very, very simple. If after that you do have any questions before making the purchase, then absolutely shoot me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, but other than that, if you guys have any questions, I'm very, very happy to help. I love you guys. Thank you for healing with me and, and taking these good vibes in with me. Okay. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.